It's Saturday evening. It's time to talk about the very best comic books in the entire world with our good friend Drew. How you doing, Drew? Welcome back to I the am, channel. Yeah, I, it's glad that, I'm glad to be back. It's been a fantastic week. Uh, read some great stuff. Been writing a bunch of stuff. Uh, but let's talk about the best comics of the week, and one of which that may not be on that list. <laughs> well, we should probably start out there because this is probably the more interesting story, I guess. Batman 154, it felt like in Batman 153 coming out of absolute power, Chip Zdarsky had his daredevil on the building top moment with Iron Man where he brought in a bunch of his own political stuff into it. And I think it kind of ruins this comic book. And it's got all the tropes that I hate. Nothing worse than the secret sibling. We've got Bruce Wade's supposed half-brother who's clearly the other hero that's out there kind of beating people up and represents gun-loving Americans. And the advice that he gets from like his senior advisor that, oh, yeah, you should just sign over half of your stock and, and uh, ownership of the company to over him so he'll feel like he's legitimate was probably the stupidest piece of dialogue that anyone would ever write expecting that Batman would ever for a second as Bruce Wayne even consider doing something that incredibly stupid. Yes, this entire comic is incredibly stupid. And we're seeing a lot of the Chip Zdar the, the Zdarsky isms from Daredevil brought into Batman now. And a lot of these Zdarsky isms are not good. They're very lazy, very heavy handed, and you can they stick out like a broken bone uh, on Joe Theismann when he gets he gets sacked by Lawrence Taylor. It's bad. I mean, it starts talking about, you know, the rich, how evil they are, which is clearly evident in this damn issue at one point. Because someone's holding a gun to Bruce Wayne. It's like, Chip. Give it up, man. You lost your 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 opinion is clearly in the minority now. Let let it go. And like you said, the um the secret brother trope, they tried this before. They tried it back in the new 52, early on in Scott Snyder's run, uh, in the Court of Owls run. And I talked to Josh McDonald about that. And I said, like, were they supposed were they implying out a secret brother? They're like, yep, they just kind of left, put it to the side, didn't do it, didn't do anything with it. I'm like, yeah, probably because it's a bad idea. It's stupid. Don't do it. And unfortunately, it looks like they're going ahead with it. And Wes, I think I, I think we may be, may be in agreement. They're, Chip is probably going to have Batman get, give over half his, his belongings to this guy. I think it's going to happen. Hopefully he's not quite that stupid. But it's clear that his brother is going to be the leader of the Court of Owls, or they're bringing that mm -hmm. back in so he can not only dump on all of Grant Morrison's stupid ideas and make them worse, but now he can start dumping on Scott Snyder's one really great idea and make it worse. But the modernity in the comic book all over the place where you have all these people picketing Bruce Wayne, you're rich and you're ashamed of it. And that's why you're bringing in all these immigrants and putting them in housing and stuff. It's like, could you make this comic book feel more out of place in the DC universe? He's clearly just writing about his own feelings and what he's going through in the real world. But he's not dressing it up and making it good fiction. He's just making it lame as hell. Modernity destroys a lot of these writers, and it's absolutely destroyed Chip Zdarsky's last hurrah on Batman. I cannot wait. I couldn't be more excited for him to move on, go back to Archie or something else that's actually worthy of his talents at this time, and get away from Batman. He does not deserve to be on this title and hasn't deserved to be on the title for a long time, a couple of years at least. Yeah, and like you said, modernity modernity ha has ruined a lot of these titles over the past several years, over the past decade or so. And we're, like you said, very clearly evident in the Batman run by Chip Zdarsky. We saw it in his Daredevil run. You know, clearly with uh, Elektra taking over his uh, Daredevil, it's like, wait a minute, why is she Daredevil now? This doesn't make any sense. Yeah, because it's a stupid idea. And his his Daredevil run went downhill very damn quickly. And we're seeing that very clearly right now in his Batman run. Batman run, I mean, really, after the first arc, it's gone all downhill and he's had really no good ideas and yeah the sooner he gets out of here the better i mean yeah don't let the door hit you with a good lord split you i mean yeah it's i i, I strongly believe you know a strong number of people are going to be glad when he leaves i mean everything that, that chip is complaining about in this book is very clearly he isn't he isn't the minority about these opinions there's no there's no lying that no lying about that. And he, he he's pissed off about stuff. There's going to be a lot of pissed off writers at DC. We're going to be seeing a lot more of this. All you got to do is don't support it. If you see it, don't buy it. Don't support it. Go support Neil before Doomface. The only thing I support about Batman 154 is that they didn't saddle Jorge Jimenez with this lame-ass awful issue. Thankfully, there were a few good comic books to recommend, and I do mean a very few. 
We've got three any books to cover first. First up, The Sacrificers, number 12, Rick Remender writing, Max Fumara on art. I was wondering where they were going with the pigeon story. I thought they were taking him too close to the edge. Well, he finally delivers it here, and I think it ends up working very, very well as we have the meetings of these worlds and people realizing the consequences of what has happened, the sun god losing his daughter and how that's broken him and it's destroying the world. And when the father finally sees Pigeon and what he becomes and the dressing down that he gives him is one of the meanest things I've ever seen a character give to another character. And I was absolutely feeling for a Pigeon that was absolutely acting heinously. Crazy stuff. Yeah, you nailed it. I, mean, I was going to say it. I mean, I made the piggyback off here, but I mean, that that scene with the, the father pigeon, it is arguably the moment in the book. And it's been one of those moments that's been really kind of, it's been we not kind of expecting it. You know, it was, we, I felt like it was going to be happening at some point, but um, that I kind of forgot about it. But hey, it happened in this issue, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. At least it's very powerful. It's very emotional. And it, yeah, from that point of view, yeah, you can't, you can't help but agree with what the father said. Um, and yeah, the art in this is beautiful. The, the drama in this, I love it. It it's a very powerful series. It's been gone for a, a while now. Like the last issue came out in what August, I think, and I kind of forgot about it. But uh, yeah, regardless, it's been a fun it's been a fun ride, fun issue. And uh, Rick Remender, a terrific storyteller. Absolutely, the sacrificer remains relevant in a very very good series from Rick Remender moving forward. We're also going to recommend Nemesis Rogues Gallery number four, Mark Miller writing, Valerio G and Giordano on art. The penultimate issue, I believe, of this latest volume of Nemesis. This is easily the best book of the week, in my opinion, and it's not even close. It's even better than the Conan book that we're going to talk about next. Nemesis and Rookie in terrible straits. All these people that have been put together, this Nemesis uh, death squad, and we finally find out what the real just behind it is it's not anything that i was actually expecting but after reading the story and thinking about it i should have been expecting this all along it's a vengeance play and thankfully nemesis is very very resourceful and i think we're gonna have a big confrontation in the next one what i'm really worried about is what's going to happen to rookie it feels like he could be up for grabs yeah it really does because uh, it, it's hard to talk about this book without bringing up spoilers because there's a certain uh, character in this book that comes up and you discover their past with nemesis. And it's like, oh, interesting. Okay. So yeah, it's clear something may end up happening with uh, this, the, the new uh, sidekick that he's got, but yeah, I love this book as well. This was my pick of the week too. Uh, it action packed, beautiful. Once again, I know people really, there's some people out there who really don't like this artist, don't like his work, but I love this guy. His, fan, his art is fantastic, and it's all in the eyes. How he draws the eyes, how he draws the emotions, you see the anger, you see the fear, the sadness, he nails it, and that is what you need in an artist in a comic book medium like this. And uh, this this is what comic books should be. Mark Miller is, seems to be one of the few guys that gets it. Mark, Jeremy Adams, Jim Zub, these three understand it. And they are nailing it. And this is arguably, you know, the best book of the week and going to probably wind up being one of the one of the books of the year. So everyone needs to check out Nemesis. And I would definitely throw Daniel Warren Johnson on that list as well. Yes. But anyone yeah. crapping on Valerio G and Giordato is out of their mind. That is a very well illustrated comic book. Final indie recommendation, Conan Battle the Blackstone, number three, Jim's of writing, Jonas Sharp on art. This uh, team up adventure where we've got Coded, we've got Brissa, a character introduced by Jim Zub, we've got Black Agnes, we've got Solomon Kane, and those archaeologists also in on this. And we get a little moment for Conan and Brissa to catch up. We get a little moment for Black Agnes and Solomon Kane to kind of get to know each other and start uh, realizing they have some common ground before the Blackstone finally comes back in here. We've got this enormous beast chasing them down sometimes not even in reality, but in their minds. And if any character gets the spotlight and looks like an enormous hero in this one, it's Black Agnes. She said, no more. I'm taking it right to this thing. And that was a great moment. Didn't see it coming. And she certainly looked even better than Code in this book, shockingly. Yeah, it, it, this was really, uh, yeah, like you said, it was kind of, not, one, I'm not I can't say centered on her. Because, you know, Jim tries to give a lot of equal time to a lot of the other characters. Personally, me, I would love to see more Solomon Kane in this. Because Solomon, I felt, 
but besides that, Black Agnes, I thought he has some great moments in this. He has some great dialogue with her. And I really, and hopefully the next issues we will. But uh, yeah, she she was a hero in this book. You do need to check this out. I read this, read this a couple times. Yeah, it, it's not the best book of the week, but it's, like I said, there's a lot of, there's a lot of dialogue going on. It's a lot of conversations, a lot of people getting to relate to one another, getting to know, know each other. I love the Solomon Cain stuff. But you really do see how this Blackstone's kind of like warped or messes with people's minds. It gets into their past and how it can it drives them to it, and it drives one one character crazy because he looks into it from the past, I believe, in his past um, encounter or past encounter with it, and it gets crazy. Yeah, I highly encourage everyone to check this out. This is a very fun read. Titan comics are absolutely on fire with Conan, specifically Jim Zub, certainly. Uh, great stuff there. Let's move it to Marvel because we actually have a Marvel comic book worth recommending this week. Aliens versus Avengers number two, Jonathan Hickman writing, Asad Ribich on art. If you came up to me and said, hey, how would you do an Aliens versus Avengers story and what would you want to see in a comic book? I wouldn't sniff this in a million years. I would come up with a hundred different ideas and none of them would be anywhere close to what Jonathan Hickman is doing here. It is so surprising and weird. And it's so weird, I think I like it. And then we're seeing all these kind of flashbacks on how they knew the aliens were coming and how they were able to prepare for it. It turns out that was old man Tony Stark, you know, messing around with Wayland Corporation and everything. And the plans and the arc that he's built as we finally see Captain America enter the fold. The Sod Ribich continues to have issues with women's faces. But other than that, I think it is a good comic book. It's not great, but it's damn good and certainly worth the read. Yeah, like you said, it, this was a very interesting read. I, I read this a couple times, and yeah, Assad, you know, a, a lot of what he, he with the human, anat- the male anatomy, he nails it. He is god tier when it comes to illustrating, painting the male anatomy. But when it comes to a woman, you know, the face, body, it's like, I think he needs some work, man. It, it, so, it, it, it's unfortunate because it, it doesn't look good, especially when you're, when you're drawing like an old, old lady Carol. It doesn't look good. Uh, but yeah, I do love the setup of this, how we, we get an explanation as to how the aliens got to earth. And in this sense, yeah, I can go with it. I'll, I'll absolutely go with it. I can buy it. We see like who is behind it as well. And it's like, okay, I can go with that. And yeah. And what Tony does, Tony is Tony. And of course he did, he planned this, you know, he planned it just in case Bruce has a great moment as well. Later in the book, this was a good read. It's a very interesting read. Um, it's, it's like, you said, it is strange. Um, yeah, I highly encourage everyone to check this out. And like you said, if I had written this, I would not have written it this way at all, which I guess I'll say it again, makes it interesting. <laughs> it's certainly not just the aliens fighting Avengers book that I thought it was going to be, but Hey, yes. I like something a little bit different than what I expected. And this is certainly not what I expected. Moving over to DC comics. We have one book to recommend Batgirl number one, Tate Bromble writing Takeshi Miyazawa on art. I was very apprehensive about this comic book after reading Green Lantern Dark from Tate Bromble, which I think was an enormous miss. And this isn't the greatest comic book in the world. In fact, I would call it the most bare bones, basic Batgirl story you could ever have, starring uh, Cassandra Cain, Orphan. She talks a little bit too much, but you know, you've got Shiva, you've got Cassandra Cain, you've got ninjas in the middle of it, lots of fighting and all that kind of stuff. And the dynamics and the complex relationship that she has with her mother, the way that she feels about Batman and While it isn't the most complex story or complex character investigation that you ever see in a comic book regarding Orphan, a character that I like a lot, I think it's pretty well done, and I thought it was very enjoyable for a first issue. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. Like you, Wes, I I did not want to read this. I I was not going to read it. Like you said, the Green Lantern Dark was a terrible comic book. And when when you come in knowing that and reading, you see that name on there, it's like, no, I don't want to. But, you know, after checking it out, yeah, I was surprised just – just how fun it is. You know, it's a basic story. There's nothing complicated about it. There's brilliance in the brevity here, I'm going to say. It's just fun. It's a fun read. And I, and how she has written um, Cassandra Kane in here and Lady Shiva, it's good. It's really, it's really good. I was surprised. And there's a lot of action in this. I was even more surprised. Honestly, I was expecting a lot of, uh, we're going to get some drinksy winksies. We're going to go to the mall and we're going to call each other sluts. Ha, da, da. None of that. There's none of that shit is in this book. It's fantastic. It's a straight up action comic book with Cassandra Kane and Lady Shiva. Sold. Take me now. T- t- take my money now. <laughs> um, but yeah, everyone needs to check this out. I think everyone is going to be pleasantly surprised by this book. Uh, this is a, probably my sleeper book of the week. You know, and uh, if you're if you have if you're off the Batman train 
like most of us are, um, do check out uh, this, ba this bad girl issue. This will very much surprise you with how good it is, how brilliant and brevity it is. And I certainly did like the fact that we were able to recommend comic books from Marvel, DC, and the Indies this week. We hadn't been able to recommend from all three sections for several weeks now. So at least we got a little bit of stuff to recommend all the way around. But it is what it is. It wasn't a bad week unless you read Batman 154. And then it was a terrible week because DC's premier character is going down in flames. And that flame's name is Chip Zdarsky. He's ruining the character. Yeah, he is. And the, it, he did this with Daredevil. And uh, he he kind of did that with Spider Man at the end of his at the end of his particular Spider Man run at, toward the end, um, but he just he, he he's a guy he cannot stick the landing he can't and um, I'm very terrified for the ending of his Batman run it's not going to be good he's setting up the next writer in a bad position if you like these kind of conversations and comic book reviews I do want to invite you to come visit me on Think Critical Patreon that is the best place to support the channel you go there you find the right tier for you. And if you get to the Doc is Right tier, which is the highest tier, you also get the Hot or Not show with Jim from Weird Science. And we run down and review all the major titles from Marvel, DC, and the Indies every single week. It's about a two and a half hour long podcast at a minimum. And we have a lot of fun there. If you want to check it out, there's a link in the video description.